this month of Ramadan, you know, it's quite quite interesting. I think for everyone. I think yeah. uh, those those of us who uh, who don't have children, this is going to be a month of Ramadan that we'll be talking about it with our children for. Uh, <laughs> And and for our children, um, I think it will be a, a month of Ramadan. They will be talking about it for their children. Uh, well, they, where they will say in this fourteen forty one, and I was telling everybody, it's an easy number to remember because we have fourteen masulmin, and then flip the numbers forty one. You know. So, oh yeah, uh, <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. So, so they will be, you know, like I can imagine people thirty years from now sitting down around the couch and telling you, you know, back in fourteen forty one, you know, we, yeah. we 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 did not go to the center, we did not yeah. do anything at the center. Everything we yeah. just went virtual. Um, oh. So, so, so it was it, it it was a very interesting uh, month. I think uh, mm. people will be talking about this for uh, generations. Yeah. Well, was was fasting good for you? Was it easy? Was it hard? Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Alhamdulillah, we can complain. Um, like mm. like every year, it's a month of blessing. It's a month of rahmah. Uh, it's a month of joy. So um, and and uh, definitely the social aspect of this holy month was missed. Uh, although mm. it was, I would say, substituted with uh, with uh, socializing with the family. Yeah, I sent, so, uh, I sent. A, a lot of people, a lot of people during Ramadan get we get invited. You know, some some people get invited every day to their friends' houses for iftar. They don't get to spend time with their family. So the social aspect is uh, sent, as you said. Uh, we got to spend a lot of time with family. Uh, alhamdulillah. But Sheikhna, I'm gonna hand it to you uh, for you to give us uh, enlighten us with your wisdom and knowledge. Inshallah. Habibi, I, uh, I was requested to speak about maintaining spirituality after the holy mm -hmm. month of Ramadan. Uh, yeah. There are periods in the year where we kind of feel engaged in uh, religious activity, such as, for example, the month of Muharram, uh, such as, for example, sometimes in Arba'in, uh, in the holy month of Ramadan. And then people, once these events are over, then they yeah. kind of feel that there's some vacuum. Uh, yeah, and and some individuals would kind of recline uh, back into slowly getting back into our mood of action um, mm. and doing things normally. And what I figured I'll do is I'll give a few points here, and people do not have to do all these points mm -hmm. because we're different. So some individuals may choose to do some points, uh, other individuals may choose to do other points. Yeah. Uh, but generally speaking, we just got to maintain our spiritual proximity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's, that's the essence. It, I think it's really interesting that you chose the keeping spirituality after uh, Ramadan because a lot of people think that uh, Ramadan is the only 30 days where I shouldn't do haram, I shouldn't uh, really do it. Uh, Ramadan finishes, um, I can do whatever I want, um, which is... The, the the wrong mentality to have inshallah ramadan we use it as a start point and then we move forward from that inshallah with uh, the blessings and obedience to al muhammad inshallah and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exactly and uh, it, the idea is for 30 days you've been doing certain activities let's say you're reading the duas praying salat uh, waking up mm -hmm. early in the morning for suhoor um, so you've been doing a lot of activities and events that take you towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the path of obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or at the same time refraining from certain things that people sometimes do uh, because it is the month of Ramadan as you mentioned you know people just don't want to uh, do something that is haram and so on and so yes. forth so if you can maintain this for 30 days um, then it basically can generate a habit uh, mm -hmm. and therefore mm -hmm. and and this is the idea uh, I mean in Surah Ibrahim, Allah tells Musa alayhi salam, um, or speaks of Musa alayhi salam, and tells him, وَذَكِّرْهُمْ بِأَيَّامِ اللَّهِ And remind them of the days of Allah. Um, we have different opinions about the days of Allah, but there is an opinion that says any day that really takes an individual towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one of the days of Ayyam Allah, like the month of Ramadan. Month of yeah. Ramadan is among the days of Ayyam Allah. The month of Muharram are among the days of Ayyam Allah. Mm. The wiladat of Ahlul Bayt, the shahadat of Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam These are days mm. of Ayyam Allah, where people mm. kind of feel inclined towards remembering um, Ahlul Bayt, or remembering the Quran, or reading the holy book, and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. So that's really the idea that we need to kind of maintain, uh, that we are mm. always to be connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm -hmm. Ahsant, Ahsant, uh, Sheikhna. Uh, Sheikhna, 
it's all right. It feels weird to drink water in the afternoon. Is that, is it? I, I know. Yeah, yeah. Don't worry. I have my cup of coffee as well. <laughs> it's morning for so, me where I am. Oh, it's morning. It's afternoon for us. Um, but Sheikhna, what, 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 what are the things that one can do uh, to to maintain that spirituality? Because when you're fasting, you're thinking, "Look, I'm fasting. I I don't want to commit a haram act because it's close to iftar. I've come all this way." Um, but you know, it doesn't feel right to to commit this haram. But when people are not fasting, they that sometimes they they're they're not reluctant to commit the haram. They they just you know they they don't think they do it. The shaitan was, uh, does the, his waswasa as he does. Um, mm -hmm. So what what are, what are some of the ways that you would recommend for for the for the day viewers uh, so that they can maintain the same um, uh, what's the word uh, the same discipline momentum momentum and discipline momentum discipline uh, that they had in Ramadan uh, after Ramadan inshallah. So, uh, in my opinion, I think people have to start with the intention, the determination. Mm. Uh, that's the beginning part. If I am not going to be determined, or at least make the knee, the mm -hmm. start the intention that I'm going to be changing, then unfortunately, there's not going to be much. So, you got to start with the knee. Just like, you know, interestingly, in every action we do in religion, Mm -hmm. It must start with a niyyah. When you start with the salat, you have to have a niyyah. You do your wudu, you have yeah. to have a niyyah. Mm -hmm. um, so everything you do, you need to have that intention. And therefore, mm -hmm. I would begin with the intention. At least begin with the intention. That, Ya Rab, today is the day of Eid. For 30 days, inshallah, by now you've forgiven me. As the hadith of Imam al-Sadiq, alayhi salam, says, on the day of Eid, all of you mu'mineen, inshallah. All of you are being called. Inshallah. And you are being asked to come and claim your prizes, mm -hmm. jawa'is. Mm -hmm. And he says, they're not jawa'is, they're not prizes made of gold and silver. Mm -hmm. Meaning it's, inshallah, the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So That's all of you mu'mineen, the glad tidings of Imam al-Sadiq to you, alayhi salam, is that you are now forgiven, inshallah. If you've obeyed mm -hmm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you followed his commands during the holy month of Ramadan, you are forgiven, and now, inshallah, you have a, a new beginning, if, I, if we may say so. Uh, Subhanahu wa is so merciful, just several of, of these new beginnings. Like in the month of Muharram, people go to, for example, Majalis, they cry for Imam al Hussein yeah. That That's a new beginning, again, for people. So I, I, I just want to tell the viewers, I've been honored to sit in, in many of your Majalis, inshallah, and uh, uh, you, you really bring out the, the musibah of Imam al Hussein. I so really touch the hearts. Habibi, well, thank you, you so Shaykh. much. Allah bless you. You're, you're, on, you're, you're on a good path as well, my brother. You know, inshallah. Inshallah. I love, I love listening to you speaking as well, mashallah. Good, good for you. <laughs> Keep it up. Thank Keep you, it up. Keep it up. <laughs> thank so, you, Shaykh. Uh, so so that, that, that initial intention, now that I know, okay, Allah has forgiven me, inshallah. Okay, so mm -hmm. that positivity, I will, I will carry on and build on that momentum and build on that positivity. So let's make the niyyah. And Imam al-Sadiq says in a hadith that I've mentioned it last Muharram, where I said that he, the hadith goes along the lines uh, of the traditional saying that goes, if there is a will, there is a way. Mm. Where, he's, where he says, ma jasadun, um, along the lines, ma jasadun ala ma azamat alayhi okay. So what, if you're determined to do something, if you were to make the niyyah, inshallah, you'll succeed. Okay, so, so that's the first beginning, I would say. Make the niyyah. That I, are, so, I am now yeah. forgiven, so make me not commit any sin. Mm -hmm. you know, make so that's, me not, that's, yeah. that's the foundation of, of maintaining spirituality after Ramadan, inshallah. Indeed. How and do we also, build upon that? Sure, okay. And, and also on that as well, uh, Amir al Mu'minin, salamullahi alayh, um, salamullahi alayh. He, he brings a very also positive aspect to this. He says it mm -hmm. brings happiness to the individual. Mm -hmm. He mm -hmm. says the happiness of the believer is in the obedience of his Lord and his grief is in his sins. Mm -hmm. ah, sense. Okay. So, so, so if you make that determination that I'm going to be inshallah in the path of obedience to Allah, inshallah this will start then taking you uh, to a higher level of happiness and, and content. Okay, so mm -hmm. that's one. The second thing then, how do I go about then doing this? Well, there are certain things I think we can start. And here are the things that I think people will maybe resonate with certain things differently. 
So okay. first of all, I would say every morning, let's start with the Quran. Mm -hmm. uh, make sure you wake up for Salat al-Fajr. Try to get up for Salat al-Fajr. <laughs> I know now that uh, we don't have to wake up for Suhoor, so there is no food uh, encouragement here to get up. Yeah, yeah. There is no incentive <laughs> anymore to get up for, for <laughs> early Listen, in the morning. Shakra. People are looking forward to fixing their sleeping pattern right now. They I just know. they just they want to go to bed at eleven, twelve o'clock, and wake up at eight, nine o'clock. Fix it because a lot of people are staying up till eight a.m. and they're waking up. Yes, at 7 yes, I know. People are on jet lag uh, <laughs> for a week or two. <laughs> the Ramadan jet lag. Um, yeah, the Ramadan so, jet lag. <laughs> so basically, um, I think making sure that we get up for salat and praying salat mm -hmm. on time. Mm -hmm. So throughout, I mean, your, your careers, try to pray Salat on time. This is something mm -hmm. really important. Uh, and that includes Salat al-Fajr. So try not to let go of this. That's mm -hmm. one. The second thing is reading the Quran. Okay, so make sure that you can get up and read the Quran. Mm -hmm. um, 50 verses every day, 100 verses every day. Um, and I've spoken of this before the, at the beginning of the month of Ramadan when, when I had a talk with the Harakah. Mm -hmm. the, mm -hmm. I, mentioned, mm -hmm. I mentioned to the mu'mineen at the time, try to read 100 verses of the Qur'an. Imam Ali salam, says, when a person reads 100 verses from the Qur'an, anywhere in the Qur'an, any 100 verses, uh, he says, then you can say seven times, Ya Allah, and Ya Allahu, Ya Allahu, Ya Allah, seven times, and then mm -hmm. ask for your hajjah. And inshallah, okay. it will be fulfilled. So okay. maintain that. Now, if a person says, it's difficult for me to read 100 verses, Sheikh, you know, my Arabic is not that great. Well, I would say that if you can read, just open the Quran and read along with a Qarib. These days, okay. we have so many Quran apps mm -hmm. on the phones. Just uh, download one of those apps, download the reciters, and then every day listen and read mm -hmm. along with the reciter. So that would facilitate to you. Yep. Okay. And if that's also difficult, then read the minimum, whatever it is that you can, but at least you're starting your morning with the Holy Quran after you pray Salat al-Fajr, uh, inshallah. So that's, so that's the thing. Third thing I would say is keep in touch with Imam al-Mahdi, ajalallah ta'ala, farjahu al-Sharif. And that could be done in different ways. One is mm -hmm. by in the qunut of Salat al-Fajr, you say, Allahumma kulli waliyika, that dua. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Sheikhna, just on the point of the Quran, we do have, uh, we just want to give a special shout out to uh, our dear brother and inshallah our ustad, uh, uh, Sayyid Jalal Masumi, who's been doing yes. uh, Quran circles with us, um, with the Akbar Foundation, uh, every day of Ramadan to complete the Holy Quran. And inshallah, we will have, uh, for the debuts, we will have weekly sessions with uh, Sayyid Jalal, amazing Quran reciter, powerful voice. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His, Actually, he was in Hajj with him last, uh, just last Hajj trip, you know. So oh, he's, mashallah. He's, so I know him really well. Yeah, yeah, mashallah. Mashallah, he's, mashallah. He's really good. He's really good, mashallah. Very, and, uh, very nice and amazing guy. And I will I share something with you uh, personal. On a personal note, brothers and sisters, mm -hmm. uh, the, the first thing I actually practiced uh, and implemented on the path of uh, serving the Ahlul Bayt, alayhim salam was the Qur'an. I mm -hmm. learned Ahkam al-Tajweed. I started with doing Tajweed al-Quran, reading the Quran. And then, uh, subhanAllah, that opened the doors for me to become, inshallah, servant of uh, Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam and opened all these doors. So the first beginning of mine was with the Quran. Ahsan, ahsan. It's, it's a great thing. And personally, I've tried this personally myself. Uh, every morning when I read the Quran, that day turns out to be a blessed day. And we have a hadith about this, by the way. There are a hadith that supports this. When a person reads the Quran, that house illuminates to the people of the heavens like the mm -hmm. stars illuminating to the people of the earth. Uh, the house in which the Quran is recited, the shayateen, uh, the devils are kicked out. The house in which the Quran is recited, people feel good. And, mm -hmm. and there's numerous such ahadith of Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam that support. So when you start your morning with basically the shay shayateen are out of your life, the, the mm -hmm. illumination, the angels are there, the barakat are there, you'll feel that difference. I, Chef, I remember someone, doing this. Someone whispered into my ear, um, I, I think we should give him a shout out as well, because uh, his comment is the last comment here. Brother Sayyid Haydar Nasrallah, he told me you're a phenomenal Quran reciter. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. I don't know about being phenomenal, but jazakumullah khaira, you know. 
yeah. Alhamdulillah. We, I do enjoy yeah. reciting the Quran, although I haven't been reciting it as often um, lately. And a lot of people, uh, I think, may not uh, be aware that I do actually recite the Quran. Uh, mm. They have not heard me. But nonetheless, uh, what I'm saying is that the Quran truly, for me, it started really the path of tawfiqat. Yani, so was in the was in the majalis of Ahl al-Bayt uh, with uh, Sayyid Fadl Bahr al-Uloom? That's, no, no, before, before, we're talking about when I was young, no, brother. As in, as my in good here. old days. As in, uh, as in when you came here. <laughs> correct, correct. In 2005, <laughs> in 2005, when uh, maybe many of my viewers were still young individuals. I was five years old. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Allah bless you, Hayyamin Hal. You know, you make me feel old now, brother. <laughs> no, you no. Know, <laughs> when I'm not that old. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, no, no. Uh, in 2005 and 2006, when I came to um, Alul Bayt Foundation, correct uh, at the time, Sheikh Fadl Bahr al Uloom, may Allah bless him, inshallah. May he, Allah bless him. Uh, he, uh, yes, so I used to recite, start the session with the recitation of the Quran, and then at the end with the session with the Latmiyat as well, with the Majah. I, 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 I think you'd even agree with me when, when there's someone there that teaches you the proper ahkam and the proper way to recite it. The proper tartil. Sometimes, even if you have a good voice, like yourself, Sheikh, a tajweed of the of the Holy Quran, then it, it really allows you to appreciate the recitation of the Holy Quran. It really t takes you into a different world. Imam al Sadiq alayhi salam says, uh, "Get someone with a good voice to recite the Quran because it penetrates the heart." Ascent, ascent. So, so definitely, I mean, it, it, it's a common sense. I mean, listen to someone with a good voice reciting a du'a. Or, mm. uh, you know, I think it, it really resonates with you. So obviously a good voice is, is a positive here. So, so listen to Sheikh Osama reciting and then versus listening to me. <laughs> you know, there are many people with good voices, you know, better voices than myself. You know, so. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. 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 So anyway, so reading the Quran, I think, is really important. Yes. Um, investing time on learning the Quran. So I'm glad uh, yani, that Sayyid Masumiyan is going to be uh, um, giving these uh, sessions. Mm -hmm. Try to learn something. I mean, there, there are not that many ahkam al tajweed. Uh, and uh, those of you who are dedicated, uh, it was in my uh, early, I mean, pre teens that I learned the ahkam al tajweed. Mm -hmm. And by the teen years, that's when I started investing a lot of time practicing the Quran and the, the, the tajweed and, and the, the taktil and all that. And alhamdulillah, that's when I mastered it. So, those of you who are in that age category, if you are in your pre teen years or early teen years, um, that's the time when you really want to invest. And even later, if you're still in university and so on and so forth, uh, some of you may have some uh, more time, especially these days when there are universities have been canceled. Yep. Um, <laughs> work has been put on hold for some individuals. So might as well say, okay, you know what? Let me learn one or two of the ahkam al tajweed at least. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so that's the thing, uh, Quran. Quran, I think, is really important and we really need to make it uh, vibrant with us. Yeah, um, That's one, the... Uh, and then, of course, uh, as I mentioned, praying salat on time. Try to do that as well. Make sure that you mm -hmm. pray salat on time. Um, the third thing I would say is connecting to Al Imam Al Mahdi, Ajallah Taala, Farj Al Sharif. And that's every morning in Salat Al Fajr, if you can, in the Qunut, read Dua Allahumma Kulli Waliyika. Yeah. This way, you're starting your day with the Dua for Al Imam Ajallah Taala, Farj Al Sharif. Okay. And believe me, the Imam, Imam prays for you. After Salat al-Fajr, my brothers and sisters, if you have a Mafatih al-Jinan, turn to a dua just after dua al-Nudba. I mean, just go through dua al-Nudba. After dua al-Nudba, there is a very short ziyara. Allahumma ballag mawlana sahib al-zaman salawatullahi alayhi wa ala ba'atahirin and so on and so forth. That ziyara takes you maybe two, three minutes at most to read that ziyara. At most. It's a short okay. ziyara of the Imam after Salat al-Fajr. So mm -hmm. try to read that ziyara after Salat al-Fajr every day. It takes you like two minutes. Mm -hmm. um, and this way, you are also uh, doing your visitation, salutations to the Imam, Ajallah Ta'ala Farajah al-Sharif. Uh, mm -hmm. And you can, and, and those of you who have time, you can get up and pray to Raq'at Salat and give the thawab to Al-Imam Al-Mahdi, Ajallah Ta'ala Farajah al-Sharif. Ajallah Ta'ala Farajah al-Sharif, yeah. Try to do this. In your Sahifatul A'mal, in your book of deeds, and we also have a hadith that Ahlul Bayt watch and they see our A'mal, our book of deeds on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. So at the end of the day, when your book of deeds is presented to our Imam Ajalallah Ta'ala Farjahu Sharif, he will be looking at it and he says, Oh, mashallah, Minhal has remembered me. He actually prayed for me. He did two rak'at salat for me. Uh, Sayyid Haidar Nasrallah is mashallah, is like always, he's, he's alhamdulillah becoming uh, among the companions of Imam Al Mahdi. Inshallah, 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 we're, so, we're, we're under his command, inshallah, insha under Allah. the command of Imam Al Mahdi. Allah bless you, Allah bless you. There is that guidance from the Imam, inshallah, although we, we may not feel it, but inshallah, it yeah. is there. Inshallah. As he told uh, Sheikh Al Mufid in the letter that he wrote to Sheikh Al Mufid, that, yes, tell, yes. that tell the Shia and Nakum bi a'yunina that you are under in our eyes, meaning that we are looking after you. We are, we are, we care for you. So, so, so he is there for us. Definitely, there is that nadra of the Imam upon us. Inshallah, it is definitely there. Uh, we do have someone with a question. If they wanted to ask the question whilst the Sheikh was talking, and then Inshallah we will answer that. Uh, but do carry on, Sheikh. Sorry. Okay, so that's that. And then imagine if the Imam sees this, obviously he'll be praying for you, for the mu'mineen. He'll be like, Ya Rabbi, this fulan, so-and-so prayed for me. Fulan did this to me. When you say salam to the Imam, say, Assalamu alayka ya ibn Rasulillah. Assalamu alayka ya Imam al-Mahdi, mathalan. Okay, and he will answer the salam with better salam. Wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. You know, he, he, yeah. Yeah. So he will answer it and he will say, wa rahmatullahi. And he'll pray for the rahmah of Allah, the barakat of Allah to be bestowed upon us when we say salam to the Imam salam Allahi that, Alayhi that, That's something important. Uh, try to do that so that you're always in connection. And I, I, I request the mu'mineen, if you can, on this day of Eid, make the niyyah. Make yeah. a niyyah that, Ya uh, Rab, O oh Allah, every good deed of mine, all the mustahabbat I do, reading the Quran, uh, doing mustahab fasting, giving sadaqah, all the mustahab things I do, mm -hmm. I will gift the thawab to my parents and to Al-Imam Al-Mahdi Ajallallahu Ta'ala And this way, you will get triple the ajr, maybe even more. Wallahu yudha'ifu liman yasha. It will not decrease your ajr in any way. And okay. By the end of the day, Imam will open his, your book of deeds and mashallah, you'll see so many gifts that you have given to him. You've given sadaqah and you've given the thawab to him. You've done ziyarah mm -hmm. of Imam al Hussein and you've given the thawab for him. So what, what's he, better? What's better than Ziyarat Imam Hussain? Your a'mal and, and that will open tawfiqah. This will open books of tawfiq, you know, gates of tawfiq mm -hmm. for you. How, mm -hmm. when, Allah knows best. But it will definitely okay. keep that close proximity with the Imam and that will give you that spiritual tawfiq, inshallah, and spiritual guidance. Mm -hmm. Ahsan, Sheikhna. Now, Sheikhna, one thing, um, because we, we see this, we've seen this a lot in... Um, during this Ramadan especially, I've heard of it a lot. Um, as you may have heard of the sister, the dear sister that passed away in Blackburn, uh, Sister Aya Hashim. Um, you, and so many, so many people who are close to me and maybe close to you um, had people pass away. Now, you know, when someone passes away, it's not something easy. It's not something easy to go through. Uh, and a lot of people start to... You know, go uh, start to think, why me, ya Allah? You know, they start to they start to blame Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. They start to lose hope in Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and actually, some even stop believing in Allah Subhanahu wa Taala because Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has uh, put them through uh, such a test. Um, for those who have gone through such a thing or experienced such a thing, what would be your advice for them to maintain spirituality after Ramadan, going through something like death during Ramadan? Okay, so death could cause a trauma for certain individuals, mm -hmm. definitely. And, and hence they might, it varies from one individual to another individual. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, it's, uh, it's very sad to lose a, a loved one. Mm -hmm. uh, it causes a lot of grief for some individuals. Um, and people, of course, for the loss of the loved ones, they, they, they feel very sad. But let's take mm -hmm. consolation of Imam al-Sajjad, alayhi salam. I mean, he witnessed the loss of his father and 18 of his family members mm -hmm. um, so so or 17 of his family members so he was really devastated yet he turned to dua he turned to dua mm -hmm. sahifa sajadiya he turned to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for help despite that mm -hmm. devastation that he lived for almost 35 years after karbala mm -hmm. so so these 35 years he turns to allah okay now, remember, Allah says in the Quran, وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوعِ وَنَقْصٍ مِنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ We are going to test you with the 
شيء with, with some, some kind of yeah. uh, خوف, fear, lack of security, جوع, hunger, and the loss, and among the losses is loss of انفس, which is loss of loved mm-hmm. ones. You're going to lose some loved ones. I mean, this is the tradition of life. No one is going to be here forever. Yeah. So uh, yeah. now when, when we do experience this, Allah tells us, الصابرين, give good news mm-hmm. to those who are patient, those who when they experience a problem, they resort to Allah. And by saying basically, الَّذِينَ إِذَا أَصَابَتْهُمْ مُصِيبًا قَالُوا إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ So try to do this. That's the thing. Third thing, brothers and sisters, when we lose a loved one, if they are mu'mineen, I mean, yes, it's difficult to lose them. But yeah. let's look at it from the other side. They have also been in relief from this dunya. Yeah. They are now with yeah. Ahlul Bayt alayhim as and they don't have to at, pay tax anymore. They don't have to go through the hassles of life, go shopping, listen not, to... Not nagging. only this, if, if they were individuals, let's say, if they were healthy, well, I mean, now they are with Ahlul Bayt and they were with the path of Ahlul Bayt. And mm. yes, all these troubles of the dunya, they're at relief and ease of it now. Mm-hmm. And if they were unhealthy individuals, people struggling, God forbid, with some illnesses, diseases, God forbid then they're also now relieved from all these difficulties and all this. And now they're at peace, inshallah, with the Ahlul Bayt. Yeah. So this yeah. should ease our difficulty in remembering that, uh, that pain. So, and then I would also like to say to the individuals, not just with the loss of a loved one, this, this concept of God, why me? Why me? Um, be aware, be sure that mm-hmm. Allah loves us. Mm-hmm. Allah, mm-hmm. Allah wants to make your life easy, not miserable. Mm-hmm. Also, a man asks Imam al-Sadiq, uh, salam, Ya Ibn Rasulillah, هَلْ فِي الدِّينِ حُبْ قَالَ وَهَلِ الدِّينِ إِلَّا الحب. He says, is there Ahsan. love in religion? He says, is there love in religion? And the Imam said, is religion anything but love? You know, Ahsan. love. It's really Good your point. love. I mean, why are you guys now doing all this? Uh, because you love Ahlul Bayt. Why are you listening to all this talk right now? Because you love Ahlul Bayt, alayhim mm-hmm. Why do you come to mm-hmm. Muharram Majalis? Because you love Ahlul Bayt, alayhim mm-hmm. So, love should be your drive to stand in the yeah. Salat, in the Mihrab, and say, Allahu Akbar. Love is the mm-hmm. drive that you listen to the Majalis of Ahlul Bayt. Love is what's drive. It's really the love of Allah, the love of Ahlul Bayt, is what's driving you, ya mu'mineen. May Allah bless yeah. you all. So Allah loves you. Allah takes care of you. Yani if a mother loves her child sometimes so much that she's willing mm-hmm. to sacrifice her life for him or for her, what, you think Allah doesn't love you then? Yani Allah's love, you cannot be compared to a mother's love. His love is so much yeah. greater. Sense. If that is the case, uh, I will use this also note, end with this note because I don't want to take too long. Uh, this is actually where your service La Habibi, because it's a practical mm-hmm. because it's being practical so some people want to be practical and that's the whole essence yeah. of this session is to be practical mm-hmm. uh, i'll share with you this a uh, couple years ago a few years ago when i was at al akbar foundation for yes. muharram not this not this last year the one before um yeah, yeah when yeah. we were in that hall in the smaller hall. cavendish yes cavendish <laughs> <Sad. laughs> Memories the, there, Sheikh. <laughs> I know it was amazing that day, especially the day when I came and the security were all at the door, mashallah. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't want to let you in. We're like, this is the guy they're here for. <laughs> <laughs> Sheikh, inshallah. I know. There was some beautiful days, wonderful days. Um, yeah. One night, on, uh, there, one night, uh, uh, one of the younger brothers approaches me and he mm-hmm. says, Sheikh, I want to speak to you if you have some time. I said, go ahead. Tawad. He says, I want to thank you because uh, I went through an episode where I felt really depressed. And um, I'll, I, do you have time for me to tell you what happened? I said, Tawad, go ahead. He says, I was a student, second year pharmacy mm-hmm. at a university uh, in the UK, somewhere in the UK. And he said that university was three hours away from home. So every day, He would take the train, go three hours to the university, and then three hours come back from the university. And he says, I used to spend six hours every day on the train, commuting back and forth. But alhamdulillah, I was thinking to myself, you know, um, I like pharmacy. This is really what I wanted to do. That's my passion. And alhamdulillah, things were going well. He says, at that university in particular, they had a test 
after the second year. In order to get into the third year, you had to do a test. Mm -hmm. And you had to pass the test. Mm -hmm. He says, so in my second year, uh, I did the test. They allow you three chances. He said, I did it once. I didn't make it. I did, took it a second time. Didn't go through. So the third time, he says, I really put in my effort. I really put in all my heart and soul into it. I turned to Allah. I said, Ya Rabbi, Ya Rabbi, and he helped me. And I studied hard, and I still failed. He says, after failing that third time, then I received a letter from the university that basically you cannot continue in this program. You're going to have now to either choose another program or choose another university. Mm -hmm. He says, that really bogged me down. I was turning to myself and saying, why? And then I was turning to Allah and saying, why me, Ya Rabbi? How come? Here mm -hmm. is me, who, who I'm a mu'min. I pray to you. I ask you for help. And there are those people who may not even recognize you. They don't even mm -hmm. know of you. They don't even think of you. And mashallah, mm -hmm. they're succeeding yeah. and they're going forward and they're succeeding ahead and they're passing. So why is a lot, this, yeah? A lot of us think like that, Sheikh. Mate. A lot yes. of us think like that, Sheikh. These uh -huh. guys don't pray to you. We pray to you. Why do they have the tawfiq and why don't we have the tawfiq? Exactly. Now, interestingly, so, so he says, I felt depressed. He said, I really felt down. Mm -hmm. I went into my room. I closed my door. I stopped eating. I really went bogged down. I was crying. Uh, because, I mean, I invested two years of my life. Here's my career is over. Everything is finished. You know, basically, um, uh, he says, and then one day, you know, I thought, okay, let me just listen to something. So he says, I go online and then all of a sudden I find somehow a lecture of yours on hope. Mm. So he says, I listened to that. It resonated with me. He says, that's where I really want to thank you for that lecture. He says, so that really gave me some upliftment. Then... Mm -hmm. He says, my father walked into the room. Subhanallah. I mean, Allah makes, you know, he made him listen to this lecture on hope. Yeah. And then his dad walks, walks in. And he says, listen, son, I know, I understand that you've been through this. However, why don't you try applying to other universities? Maybe mm -hmm. some other university will accept you. So try. I mean, this is not the end of the world. And I will help you. And this is important. You see how Allah says, فَإِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ Yusra. Yusra, in -usri, you know, some of the Mufassirin say uh, it is with the difficulty that ease comes. You know, as mm -hmm. you experience problems, Allah will send you some lecture on hope. Your father would walk yeah. into your room and say, I will help you. A friend of yours will come to you. Some, some hope will come. I mean, Allah does not really leave the people who are in desperation. Allah Sorry. will send them some, some kind of relief. Mm -hmm. as they are experiencing the difficulty. So he says, my father motivated me, encouraged me. And then indeed, we started applying to certain universities. Mm -hmm. He says, I got accepted at a university that is only 20 minutes away from my house. Subhanallah. And they admitted me into the third year. So they recognized my two years. Oh, And mashallah. they admitted me into the third year. And he says, now I'm practicing i went يعني, into this uh, i'm in my fourth year he says because i only now spend 20 minutes going and coming back you know 40 minutes basically a day as opposed to six hours i have joined <laughs> i've joined the absoc society i'm Masha an Allah. active member we organize events and so on so he says sheikh failing that test was the best thing that happened to me subhanallah <laughs> Subhanallah, subhanallah, Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala works yeah, in different I mean, ways. We may this, is, know this is a real story, a practical story for, uh, for these. I'm not talking about history and long time ago, and, the, and mm. uh, although there are numerous such stories throughout, mm -hmm. throughout life. I mean, look at Prophet Yunus in the stomach of the whale. And he says, La ilaha illa and subhanaka inni kuntu min al-zalimeen fastajabna lahu. Wa najjaynahu min al-gham wa kathalika nunjil mu'mineen. Allah says, mm -hmm. we save him. So... Numerous stories, but this one is practical. Yani when yeah. people say, Ya Rabbi, why me? Why me? Allah loves you. Now, in mm -hmm. his case, he discovered, he realized it after a year or two. Mm -hmm. Sometimes out of Allah's wisdom, it might take us 10 years, 20 years, and maybe in the hereafter is when we will realize what is the mm -hmm. wisdom behind all this difficulty. So mm -hmm. be assured that any problem you experience in this dunya, Allah is testing you. But that test also is because Allah loves you. Mm -hmm. Allah wants the best for you. So if you keep that positivity in mind, that really Allah loves me. Okay, so let me turn to him. I seek guidance from him, seek help from him. Inshallah, things will be well. And also, 
I will tell people, if you really feel down, Imam Ali alayhi salam says, talk to people. Mm -hmm. Go and speak to people. But he says, the will muru'at. The will muru'at is someone, in the Iraqi language, we say Abu Muru'a. Mm -hmm. Abu Muru'a is some, yeah. some, someone who has some dignity, fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, such that he will never or she will never expose you. Yeah. And, and they will give you a good advice. Mm -hmm. Someone who can give you a wise advice. Don't speak to somebody who, God forbid, even though he might like you, he might, he might really respect you, but may not have that experience in life to give you a good advice and might give you the sure. wrong advice. Sheikh, sure. just to, sorry to interrupt you. We do have a few minutes uh, because we do have a, a lot of people um, coming on the show. Uh, so if I can ask you for any final words for the dear viewers, inshallah, before uh, you sadly depart us. So my, my, again, I will briefly summarize to those of you who've just joined us, practical tips to maintain our spirituality. One, do salat on time. Mm -hmm. Two, I said that try to read the Quran on a daily basis. Don't let go of yeah. the Quran. Three, connect to Al-Imam Al-Mahdi for Rajah sharif regularly. Four, mm -hmm. if, you, if you always do istighfar. Say, astaghfirullah rabbi tuwili, astaghfirullah rabbi tuwili, astaghfirullah tuwili. After salat al-fajr, 70 times, Imam al-Baqir says, when you say 70 times after salat al-fajr, astaghfirullah rabbi wa atubu ilay, Allah will forgive for you 70,000 sins that day. So and he says, if someone, if, if someone commits more than 70,000, then la khayra fi. There is no good in that person, you know, more than 70,000 <laughs> sins. <laughs> so, so people who say, yani, Sheikh, okay, what if I recede and start going back to my old habits? Do istighfar. Immediately do istighfar. Ahsan. Allah, inshallah, Ahsan. will put you back on the track. And the last thing I would advise people, because of the sake of time, is volunteering for the path of Ahlul Bayt, alayhim as -salam. Whether it is with the Akbar Foundation, Harak al Husayniya, mashallah, you guys have so many youth programs and so many programs there. So let people participate, give people that opportunity because it makes you feel good. Uh, the hadith of Imam Ali alayhi salam says anyone who brings joy and happiness to a people's uh, heart, people's heart. Uh, then, he, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will create a, a grace mm -hmm. that will push all harm away from you. Ahsan, Sheikhna, Ahsan. Thank you so much for your time, Sheikhna. Uh, we, we wish we could sit here and talk to you for hours, but inshallah, we will see you soon on another live show, inshallah, in the near future uh, when we plan one. Thank you so much. I request all the viewers to please remember me in your du'as. I really need your du'as. Uh, may Allah bless you all, and inshallah, Allah will end this pandemic, keep all harm away from you and humanity at large, and may Allah reunite me with you, inshallah, again in inshallah. the new future, my brother. Inshallah. We will see you soon, 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 inshallah. Ya Allah, ya Allah. Hold on to Al-Imam Al-Hussein. Never let go of Al-Imam Al-Hussein, my brothers. I have seen people who became, be, were servants of Imam Al-Hussein, but then left. Don't. Don't leave Al Imam Al-Hussein, Salam Allahi Alayhi. Don't leave. We One understand. of the reasons of my tawfiqat, besides the Holy Quran, I began with the Quran, but serving Al Imam, Salam Allahi Alayhi. Inshallah. Ahsan, Sheikhna, we will see you soon. Inshallah, Sheikhna. Wa As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Alaykum as-salam. Salaam alaykum as-salam. Salaam alaykum as-salam. Salaam alaykum as-salam. Salaam alaykum as-salam.